two thin concentric and coplanar spherical shells of radii A and B, where B is greater than A, carry charges Q and capital Q respectively. Find the magnitude of the electric field at a point distance x from their common center for the following cases. So, let us do one by one cases. In the first case, we can see that the value of x is lesser than a but greater than 0. So, let us draw a Gaussian surface whose value is, whose radius is lesser than a. So, uh, we have drawn a Gaussian surface whose value is lesser than a. Now, uh, we can apply the Gauss's law. Integral e dot ds is equal to q divided by epsilon naught. So, in this case, we can see that for uh, this Gaussian surface, you can see the charge enclosed within it is 0. So, we can substitute the value of q as 0. So, the total electric field enclosed within it will be 0. So, this is the answer for the first part. Now let us do the second part. So let us erase the Gaussian surface. Now we will draw a Gaussian surface for the second case. In this case, the value of x is lesser than b but greater than a. So let us draw a Gaussian surface like this. Here the value of x is lesser than b but greater than a. By applying Gauss's law, we can write E dot ds is equal to q divided by epsilon naught. So, in this case, the value of q is nothing but q plus q only. So, we can write down q divided by epsilon naught. Now, let us see the direction of the electric field vector and the um, area vector. So, here you can see that on every point on the Gaussian surface, the value, the direction of electric field is in this direction perpendicular to the Gaussian surface and also the area vector is also in the same direction. So, we can say the angle theta is 0. So, we can write down here integral instead of E dot ds we can write it as E ds cos 0. So, that will be E ds only that is equal to q divided by epsilon naught. Since the electric field is constant at a constant distance, we can take out this electric field outside the integration. So, we can write down E integral ds is equal to q divided by epsilon naught. The value of uh, surface, total surface area. Once you integrate, you will get the total surface area for the Gaussian surface. And we can write it as E into 4 pi x square. Since it is a spherical surface, we can write we can write the total surface area as 4 pi x square. That is equal to q divided by epsilon naught. So, from this we will get the value of electric field as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q divided by x square. So, this is the answer for the second part. Now, let us do the third part. So, I am erasing this Gaussian surface. Now, in the third part, they have mentioned that Gaussian surface, we need to construct the value of x in this case is x is greater than b and it is lesser than infinity. So, it, it can have a very large value also. It can be more than b value. So, let us construct a Gaussian surface around this. So, we have constructed a Gaussian surface and you can see the value of x in this case is which is greater than b. Now, let us do the third case over here. Again, we are applying Gauss's law. Again, you can see that the electric field direction in this case is also normal to the Gaussian surface. In this case, third case, you can see the electric field is normal to the surface and your area vector is also in the same direction. So, the angle theta is 0. So, once we apply the Gauss's law, we can see E dot ds is equal to Q divided by epsilon naught. So, in this case, you can see the total charge enclosed within the Gaussian surfaces. We have a plus Q inside and capital plus Q also inside. The total charge will become Q plus capital Q divided by epsilon naught. 
since the electric field is and the area vector is parallel to each other we can write e dot ds as e ds and you can take e outside since e is constant at a fixed distance so we'll be getting e into integral ds in the similar way we can write 4 pi x square that is equal to q plus capital q divided by epsilon naught so the value of electric field in the third case is e is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught q plus q divided by x square so this is the answer for the third part